everyone, welcome back to Making Waves. Thanks so much for being here today. Well, have you ever been on a cruise and you notice the crew is constantly cleaning, the ship is immaculate? We have certainly experienced that um, with celebrity. We've mostly sailed with celebrity. But have you ever wondered how clean are the ships really? Well, we're going to dig into the data that the CDC compiles and really find out just how clean those ships are. So stay tuned. Let's talk about it. So the CDC has a program called the Vessel Sanitation Program. And this program consists of regular inspections by CDC personnel, and then reports and scores are generated from that. So the goal of the Vessel Sanitation Program is to prevent gastrointestinal issues on cruise ships. And they compile data regularly. I will link the website um, in the description box below. But I've also compiled it here for you in hopefully a little bit more readable format. So let's dig into it. So as you can see on the screen, I have each of the major kind of mid-tier cruise lines. And I looked at all of the scores from all of their ships and came up with an average. So let's start with Carnival. Carnival had an average score of 96.17, so not bad. The highest scores were for Conquest and the Panorama, and they both had perfect scores of 100. The lowest score was for the Carnival Sunshine, and that was an 89. We'll dig into that in just a little bit. Next up is Celebrity. Celebrity had an average score across their fleet of 98.6, so very good. And you can see lots of their ships had a perfect score of 100, including the Ascent, Beyond, Edge, Millennium, Solstice, and the Summit. Their lowest score was a 95, and that was for both the Reflection and the Silhouette. Next up is Disney. They had an average score of 98. Very good. Uh, and the Fantasy was a perfect score of 100. The Wish and the Wonder were their lowest scores at 96. On Holland America, the average score for their fleet was 96.7. The Eurodam achieved a perfect score of 100. And then their lowest score was a 95 for the New Statendam and the Nordam. All right, next up is MSC. So MSC had a score of 96.7 as their average. The Seascape had a perfect score of 100. The Seaside was the lowest uh, in their fleet with a score of 92. And I don't know if you all remember this, but last year, the MSC Seaside was in the news because they had failed their CDC inspection. And not just kind of failed it, really miserably failed it. They had a score of 67. So it's nice to see that they have made lots of corrections and improvements and um, passed with a score of 92. All right, let's look at NCL, Norwegian Cruise Line. Average score of 97.3. Again, they also had several ships with a perfect score. The Bliss, the Gem, Joy, Sky, and the Sun. And their lowest score was for the Epic with a score of 89. We'll talk about that a little bit more here in a couple minutes. Uh, carrying on, we have Princess with an average score of 95.07. Their highest score achieved for their reports were a 99, scored by the Discovery Princess and the Royal Princess. The Regal Princess was the lowest scored ship at a score of 91. All right, Royal Caribbean, average score of 96.6. They had two ships that achieved a perfect score, the Allure of the Seas and the Voyager of the Seas. And the Oasis was the lowest uh, rated ship at a score of 92. And then for Virgin, I only saw two of their ships that had, um, that had reports. So it was the Scarlet Lady and the Valiant Lady, and they both achieved a score of 95. So I didn't uh, obviously include a low score. So now that we reviewed the averages, I thought it might be interesting to look at a couple of reports. So I thought, well, let's look at the two lowest rated ships on the list. And so we're going to start off with the Norwegian Epic and take a look at their report. All 
right, so let's look at the report here. It's pretty long, so I'm just going to pick a handful of ones to look at. Let's maybe start off with this item number 20 in the pantry on deck 15. It says the tip of a large chef's knife stored on the cleaned storage rack was broken and jagged. And then for each infraction, they do include a recommendation, such as ensuring multi-use food contact surfaces are smooth, free of breaks, uh, et cetera. So there's that one. Let's now go down maybe to um, this number 26, Galley Deck 4, brown dried food residue of more than a day's accumulation is on the back plate behind the can opener blade. Um, and the recommendation, obviously, ensuring food contact surfaces are clean. Let's see. Let's go down to item 33, uh, meat freezer. Excessive ice was on the back bulkhead and deckhead behind the unit's evaporator near the butcher room access door. Not sure what all that means, to be honest, but they do have, you know, a recommendation there of again, ensuring that anything that can come into contact um, with food is cleaned um, and cleaned often. Let's keep going here. Let's, let's look at this potato peeler issue. Um, it says preparation in deck three. Silicone was soiled and peeling around the right potato peeler's exit door housing. This was corrected, it says. And let's see, lastly, Keep going down here. Um, let's go here to item 39 in the bakery on deck five. It says a large fly was observed landing on pie dough being rolled on the door sheeter. So that's interesting. And it just says to control the presence of insects, rodents, and other pests. Wow, that seems like a good note to end on. So it certainly seems like there's some things on the reports I don't really fully understand. And some of the things seem pretty minor and might be easily fixable. You know, there was the issue with the fly and the pie dough. And yes, I know that's, that's pretty gross. But, you know, cruises are open air, right? There's, there's doors to the inside that are opening and closing all day long. I can imagine it would be really difficult to keep any flying insects out, especially when they're in port. Uh, so I'm a little bit understanding of it. Uh, and obviously this didn't rise to the level of needing to fail them for it. So it wasn't such a pervasive issue, um, but I'd be interested to know your thoughts on that. All right, let's next look at the Carnival Sunshine. All right, so here is the report for the sunshine. And again, it's pretty long. We won't go through all of it. Uh, we will just touch on a few items. So let's maybe start with number 10. Uh, and this is concerning the serenity waterfall and pool. And it looks like the pH values were off. Uh, so the inspector had tested them and they did not match what the crew had recorded as the pH balance. And so the recommendation is to maintain halogenation and pH control systems in good repair and operate them in accordance with the manufacturer's recommendations. And obviously it's important to maintain uh, the proper pH for uh, safety of guests. All right, let's keep going. Let's look here at this number 13 in the galley roast walk-in refrigerator area. And it says six food entries in the cooling log were recorded above 70 degrees at the two hour critical control limit. It looks like the recorded temperatures range from 76 to 78. And there were several food items in there, all meats. It looks like brisket, prime rib, short rib, chicken. Uh, so the staff did dispose of the bins containing that food. And of course the recommendation is that the staff really pay close attention to those time limits and ensure food is stored at proper temperatures to prevent, obviously, any kind of bacteria uh, and harm to guests. All right, let's keep going. Let's go down to number 20. Uh, it says the pizza stone in the Marketplace Pizza Buffet area was heavily pitted. According to crew, prepared pieces are placed directly on those stones for serving to guests. 
and the recommendation is to ensure that any food contact services are smooth and free of breaks or seams. All right, I want to go down to the bottom or close to the bottom to number 39. Uh, and this just looks like it's in various areas. And the report found numerous flies and cockroaches that were observed. Inspectors observed tiny cockroach nymphs and adult cockroaches. Various locations that you can see listed there. Uh, and the recommendation is obviously to effectively control the presence of insects and rodents. So that's the Carnival Sunshine. I would love to know your thoughts on that. You know, as I was researching this, my mind kind of went down a little bit of a bug rabbit hole. And I kind of feel like where there's one cockroach, there's probably not just one, there's probably a whole family, a whole clan of cockroaches. I don't know if that's true. I'm, I'm definitely not a bug expert. I'm also not particularly bug phobic, but that report may give me a little bit of pause. I, you know, we have a choice in who we cruise with, and I don't know that I would be signing up quickly to sail on the sunshine. Again, they received a passing score, so I want to be very clear about that. This wasn't to the level that they would fail their inspection. Um, but I don't know, it kind of grosses me out a little bit. Uh, I would love to know your thoughts. But as I said, I did kind of go down a rabbit hole and thinking about bugs, right? So we eat out at restaurants, get takeout, and we don't necessarily know the condition of the kitchen and the food storage areas. So it got me wondering, how many bugs does a human accidentally consume, you know, in a lifetime? And so I actually looked that up. Now, I'll put my glasses on to read this. But this is according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture. And it says, the average person accidentally consumes one pound of bugs each year. This is because fruits, vegetables, spices, and many processed foods that are legally permitted by the FDA contain tiny levels of bug parts which add up over time. You right? <laughs> kind of gross. Um, so, you know, perhaps that puts some things in perspective. I don't know. I would absolutely love to know your thoughts on all of this down in the comments box. If this content is helpful, I hope you'll consider giving this video a like and subscribe to join the Making Ways family. As always, we so appreciate you taking time to watch. And until next time, happy cruising. All right. Come on. Uh, being rudely interrupted. This is <laughs> this is Brody, uh, and uh, yeah, he normally doesn't do this. So say hello to everyone. All right, bye. For the blooper reel. Okay. <laughs>